we can now enter more to see the difference between the first attention and the second attention and the further mood. What does first attention know? First attention know the object of the knowledge, know the contents. We could say know the stage, what is happening on the stage. The dual mind, the analysis, the logic, bets, goes, following the either or process, recognizing the difference, knows, go from the past to the future, to search, asking why, or trying to solve a problem. No problem, but what is missing? The forgotten side, the backstage. The backstage could be the inner world, could be the spirit, could be the consciousness, could be the emptiness could be the subject. If we get just the object and the stage, we forgot the subject and the backstage. The experience is object and subject together, emptiness and fullness together, stage and backstage together. Proposing a new epistemology means suggesting new rules of the game for a new game, the game of exploring a dynamic and interconnected field, interconnected world, using the appropriate tool. Second attention epistemology could be an appropriate tool. We know the history of the knowledge is the history of two ways of knowledge. The reason, the intuition, dualism or unity, reality or truth, judgment and observation, first attention or second attention. To the east we find a history based on the illusory nature of the boundaries and then cultures of the no boundary, of the essence the ultimate truth. To the West, we find a history based on the definition of the boundary, nomination, numeration, classification, mensuration, explanation, falsification, the reality. The new vision appears to reconcile the two positions, boundaries and no boundaries. Boundaries exist and do not exist. When talking about boundaries, we must be careful not to make what Wilber would call a category fallacy or what Bateson would call a distortion of communication. Moreover, we should avoid falling into what Ferrer would call subtle Cartesianism, drawing an, on another plane the same arbitrary boundaries that we are seeking to overcome. We must remember that we are dealing with a further boundary, a meta-boundary that lies not in the thing, but in the mood, not in vision, but in the master of the vision. On her is level of attention. The science of reality sets forth a methodology for inquiring uh, reality that seeks to state through experimentation and with a fair degree of certainty what is true and what is false. The science of truth does not claim to say what truth is, nor is it about what is true or false. It is concerned 
with presenting a methodology that stands a good chance of accurately pointing to how truth may be attained. In first attention, reality is real. In second attention, reality reveals the truth. Both must be fulfilled while being mindful of one another. Second attention epistemology hypothesizes that pure observation, pure sensation, and pure action allow us to transcend first attention that perceive reality with which I identify itself in second attention that instead observe and de-identify itself. The operation consists of an endless dialogue between truth and reality, a dialogue that includes subject and object, event and master of the given data, boundary and whenever experience it, thing and mode, ever coinciding spheres here and now. Everything is in its own guise. The thing points to the sphere of reality, the mode points to the sphere of truth. Second attention doesn't exclude first attention, but transcend it and include it here and now. The boundary between thing and mode, between reality and truth, would thus be dubbed the mother of all boundaries, the immanent boundary that is inherent in every event. A boundary, like any other that exists in reality but not in truth, it makes the end on one end while making the beginning on the other. On the one end it precludes, on the other it indicates. On the one end, it dwells in the here and now. On the other, it transcends itself into the elsewhere. It follows that every event is both immanent and transcendent, fundamental and essential, thing and mode. Each event is at the same time real and true. The assumption of second attention epistemology is that awareness is reached on the surface of contact with the boundary and that this is always here and now. The boundary, this is not that, at one indicates or precludes the essence of thing, that is this. The ability to indicate or preclude is inherent in the boundary. The responsibility of indicating or precluding is inherent in the master of the vision, the subject of the experience. The assumption is that the first attention precludes, the second indicates, and that these always occur here and now. The epistemological error take place when the first exclude the second or the second exclude the first. In first attention the chair is not a tree. In the second attention chair and tree are here and now. With the shift from first to second attention, the boundary moves from the level of judgment to that of mindfulness, attention, from the mind to the de-identification from the things to the participation between mode and thing. An inclusive and non-exclusive plane that outlines a world where I can abide by judgment and not suffer it, where, for example, the true versus false boundary remain, 
but it is transcended and encompassed in the now legible observation. A world in whose plane I watch the moon, it is round, third, or stand, still third. It has spot or seas, it is fair or ugly, silver or spooky, etc. The plane is transcended and I watch myself beholding the moon that in my eyes is still round, etc. We are talking about a science of consciousness, a second attention epistemology where the true false boundary retreats into the background as the data collected with the self seeing eyes remain in the foreground. What does second attention knows? The object of the awareness is the subject of the experience. The subject of the experience while he is going from the past to the future, thinking and judging, fighting with the strategies, controlling, adding fear, searching, asking why, delegating with guilty, or solve, trying to solve a problem. The object of the awareness are on the backstage, is the inner world. We can say the spirit, we can say the consciousness, we can say the truth, we can say the identification beyond boundaries. How does second attention know? Second attention know through the unity of mind, through the synthesis, the analogic, the insight, the intuition. pitfalls of second attention's way of knowing, the either or fallacy. It is clear that if the experience is a participatory dialogue, the classical system of learning based on theoretical knowledge or even based solely on practical experience has a limitation that must be overcome. At the same time, dual rational approach as a limitation that must be overcome, just like the intuitive unitive approach, we call either or fallacy the limit of each mode to know that it moves in a dualism of knowledge. Both and fallacy. More enlightened system of knowledge suggests an approach to teaching that is able to balance theory and practice or dualism and unity, reason and intuition. This approach, however, brings together the two poles of dualism without recognizing that they already are together and do not need to be unified. To unify requires an act which undermines the integrity of the experience. We call both and fallacy every approach that wants to put together what already is integral and untouched. The suggestion is that the key to a science of consciousness does not just rely on worldviews, methodologies of research or clinical evidence. That is to say, it is not rooted in the theoretical model, the experimental and experiential protocol or data processing. Instead, it is suggested to dwell mainly in the master of the vision, the method and the given, namely in the subject of the experience and in what he, she, himself, herself, makes of the vision, method and the given. The suggestion is that liberation from the myth of the given 
as Wilfried Sellers puts it, should be sought less in the given data, the explicit clinical evidence, than in what happened in the master of the given, in what might be called implied essential inherence. The assumption of this paper is that difference that makes the difference lies in mindfulness, attention. So the second attention epistemology suggests a common denominator named a further mode, a further mode of knowing. Further mode ask to the subject of the experience the three sublime achievements, a pure action, a pure sensation, and the pure observation. The father mode makes the two one. All is one, here and now. Recognize that this is this, that is that, and this is that. Recognize that theory and practice, reality and trust, first attention and second attention are one altogether. The father mode suggests the translearning, an approach that is able to know with the unitary and intact attitude based on the experience of integral dialogical dance between part and wall, organismic self and field, phenomenological map and territory, theory and practice structure and process, epistemology and ontology. The translearning seeks to promote and actualize the organismic dynamic further mode through the interconnected and integral experience of unity in every event, an experience that cannot be separated from the body or rather from the bodies as explicated as an integral experience. Further mode, as we already said, makes the two one, all in one here and now, the stage and backstage, the matter and spirit, the body and the mind, the reality and the truth, the identification and the de-identification, the unitive mind and the dual mind together. 